Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to yet another session of Foundations. <laughs> Very happy to have all of you joining in on a Saturday evening. So I see a lot of teachers are joining in. Let us wait for another minute or two. And exactly by another two minutes, we'll begin with the session. The resource person has already joined. We'll wait for another two minutes. Hello, good evening, everyone. So we are all set and ready to start with the session. A lot of people have already joined in. So if any one of your friends or colleagues has not joined, requesting you to please drop in a message for them to join in. So today's session, we are focusing on fun with learning. So we're going to learn with fun. This is the last session today that we have before our holidays. So we would like this session to be fun for all of us, all the educators, and carry the fun to our classrooms also. Teaching in the foundational years as it is, is a pleasure in itself. And let us learn some new methods and new uh, activities and some new things that we can do in our class to make our classrooms even more effective and more fun way to learn for the students. So with this, I would like to call upon our resource person, Ms. Ruma Purkayas. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening to you. Good evening, everyone. I'm happy to see you all here. I know winters have set in. Weekend has begun. And uh, I don't know how many of you have gone on to your, uh, your winter vacations, but thank you for being here. Um, thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma yes, ma'am. I'll just put everybody on mute for now so that the session goes uninterrupted. Yeah, and then we can take up questions. So I put everybody on mute. Yes. You cannot thank unmute you. yourself. And if you have any questions, just put them up on the chat yeah. box. I'll take them up. And uh, so with this, ma'am, can we begin with the session? Yes, Peter. Thank you. Can we just, uh, can I just share my screen? Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. All right. As we said, as Himani said, it's fun with learning. Learning is best when it's fun, when we are happy with what we are doing, when we are happy, we are more productive. When we are more productive, we learn better. We all know that. And the uh, best thing that we are looking for is a happy child, a child who likes to go to school, a child who wakes up on a weekend and says, why we don't have school. I think if you can reach that, 90% of your mission is done. So with that in mind, we continue to discuss a few more aspects of play. We've already been discussing play. Now we'll discuss a few more aspects of play and how best we can make it fun for the children. I wanted to share this quote that I read somewhere. Kindergartners can learn alphabets, numbers, math puzzles and more while having fun. And that is what kindergarten is all about. Let's remember that. It's all about having fun. Somewhere down the line, we've forgotten that. We've made it more bookish. We've made it more assessment oriented i mean i'm, I'm a little uh, upset to you know that we do assessments yes we need to, assess, we need to evaluate for feedback oh, i could think you could mute yourself yeah thanks a quick revision <clears throat> what is play i i go on and on about this it's a developmental mechanism that allows children to turn actions into meanings and to internalize those meanings. I've done this earlier. I wanted to repeat it because don't take these actions in a frivolous manner. These are actions that are helping them to learn. So if we guide and structure these actions the way we want them to, learning is going to be better and definitely longer lasting. Quickly, role of ECC. I think you're all ECC teachers here, so you know all this. I'm not going to discuss this again. Circle time, I, I like to do every session that I do on ECC with a reminder how important circle time is. I'm sure each one of you is doing circle time in your classes. I have no doubt about that. Well, let's make circle time more fun, more structured, and with a plan that we know what we're going to do in our circle time. We know what is our objective and we know what is it that we are going to tap, whether it's a social skill or a cognitive skill or or even pure fun. Pure fun handles and brings out a lot of skills that we generally tend to ignore. All right, let's go further. The basic aim of whatever we do, whether it's fun with learning, any other pedagogy, is to teach children to listen, to model themselves after us, how to solve things, questions, strategies, this solving technique is only going to get more complex as they grow older. Question. Please allow children to question. No question is wrong. If a question arises, it's because there is some curiosity in the mind of the child. Even us, sometimes, you know, we ask questions which later we feel that was so silly. Why did I ask? But the point is that the question arose in my head. So why will I not ask? Provoke. Provoke them into doing things, into thinking, into creativity, into critical thinking. Research sounds very big, yes, but when we ask them to find things, to piece things together, to look for certain things, it's, it's their kind of research. And of course, we have to encourage our children to be independent, which I feel somewhere this uh, we are not doing. We are mollycoddling them so much. They're not becoming independent. Have you heard of the word brain breaks? Can I have an answers in the chat box? What is a brain break? Okay, before that, Himani, I think we could do, I'll pause sharing and maybe we could do the poll. Yeah, sure, ma'am. Yeah, let me just pause this. Yeah. Can we just take a poll and let's see? Okay, so here is the poll. You all of you can select. Your now, I asked you, what is a brain break? What do you think is a brain break? Is it time to sleep? Is it time to do something else? Is it now time for some fun? Or is it time to reset ourselves? Okay. Let's see. It's now time for some fun is getting the maximum responses. Yes. 
Great, 63%, 64 have said. Interesting. I'm happy to say that most people have not said it's time to sleep, though sometimes <laughs> I feel that you sleep also. Okay. All right, so I'll end the poll here, ma'am. Yes. And here are the results. Okay, interesting. So all of you say that it is, one minute, let me just resume my sharing. Yeah. All of you say it's time for some fun. Yes, brain breaks. When we get fed up of an activity, we go on to another activity, which is what brings a difference in what we do. So let's see how brain breaks are. What is a brain break? Okay, now brain break is something that takes you away from your mental work and helps your brain and body to reset. You know, there are days when it's cold, we don't want to go outside. When it's raining, we don't want to go outside. When it's too hot, we don't want to go outside. Or if there's something else happening in school and you all are told, just keep the children in the classroom. They get bored. You get bored. So why not take a brain break? Why not do some activity which is easier to do or which is something that takes you away from the actual work that you have designated, whether it is, a, a, you know, a, a math activity or anything. So when we take these little breaks, it resets your mind. It energizes your body. What you need to do here is to make sure that the alternate activity that you do is fun. I mean, there's no point if you're doing a math activity sheet, then you tell them, all right, children, I'm giving you another sheet now. Let's do some counting. That's not going to help. You have to make it more structured. You have to make it, it could be math, but it has to be, there has to be a fun element in it that has to be, and you have to structure it. Okay, now this is what I'm going to do today as a brain break. Research tells us that for kindergartners up to the age of six, brain breaks are required every 20 to 25 minutes. Now, how practical that would be and how much you would be able to do, that will depend on where you are. And brain breaks don't have to be long ones. They could be five minutes, 10 minutes. And you come back to what you are doing. Now, how do these help? Because basically it's an activity that takes you away. So they help you. One minute. I'm not able to. Get the... Yeah. Can you see it? I'll somehow for some reason I'm not able to see it. Okay. Can, can, I'm sure all of you can read this. Now. They energize you. They help oxygen to move into your brain. You start attending, you become more productive. And when you are doing something else, your brain processes the earlier activity. I'm sure you all know we tell children, please sleep before an exam. Just close your books and go to sleep. And children always say, no, 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 if I go to sleep, I'll forget everything. You don't forget everything. When your brain is in sleep mode, your brain processes the information in your head. Sometimes when you are not able to come to a decision, we always say sleep over it, you'll find a solution tomorrow. Because your brain processes things when the brain is sleeping, when you are sleeping. So when I talk about a brain break, I'm not talking about sleeping, I'm talking about doing something else for a short period of time in your classes. But it will also allow the children to process what they've done in the previous activity because this activity has to be very different from what was done earlier. Now today as part of brain break, let's look at this. It helps you to focus. It will reduce the anxiety. I'm not able to complete it. Never mind, Mama said I can do something else. Helps you to listen, to cooperate. It helps you to take turns. When you do engage in an activity other than what you are already doing. Today, I'm going to do four types of brain breaks. Indoor games, outdoor games, being in nature and field trips. Please <clears throat> remember that these are important and these have to be taken with a little more seriousness than we do because they help to consolidate learning, they help to improve learning. Let's look at indoor games. I'm sure everybody knows lots and lots of indoor games. The market is full of indoor games. Houses are full of indoor games. Parents buy every game that's available on the earth. They're filling up their homes with toys and games. But every game, every toy, if played properly, has some value. So 
Now, what are the benefits of indoor games? I'm not going to spend time on discussing indoor games. I'll give you a few activities after this. It keeps the stress away. When you play together, what do you do? There's lots of laughter. When you laugh, it keeps your stress down, keeps your mood happy. So obviously, you're going to feel better. It will become, you'll obviously spend time together. And now, this is also called quality time. Quality, spending quality time is not only the domain of parents. Spending quality time is also important for teachers to spend quality time with their children. Develop cognitive skills, yes. Supposing we're playing chess, supposing we're playing some other ludo or, or something like that. It's a focused activity. So one particular cognitive skill is growing in that. So that part of the brain which is being focused is growing. The, that part of the brain which is responsible for that activity is getting stimulated. Increase your productivity definitely. Because if you're in a good mood, you're laughing, you're happy, you're doing concentrated work, obviously your productivity level will go up. You do a variety of body movements. You use a variety of postures. You do a variety of eye-hand coordination. All this is helping you to grow, to develop, to better. Better health. You're, mentally, you will feel better because you're happy, you're laughing, your mood is better. Your creativity will come out depending on the kind of work that you do. And you know, when you're happy, there are these endorphins, which are which is known as the happiness chemical that is released in your brain. So obviously, learning is that much better. And please remember that when we do indoor proactive tasks, it makes children more positive. So that's how indoor games can be used as a brain break. And they are very effective. I'll take you through a few exercises of brain breaks. Few, I'll give you a few suggestions. All these can be played in the class. Find it fast. You don't have to go out anywhere. You can choose anything. Look around for something soft in the class. Everybody would look around. We'll give you a few answers. Look around for something red. What, what something hard that you can see? Can you see something pokey? How many of you have got red water bottles? Let's count. Um, anything you can find out and whoever finds it fast. So it's just a game called finding it fast. It can be comfortably played in a class. It And it could be a 10-minute game and you could go back to what you could do. It could just divert the children's minds. Musical chairs. You don't need chairs. You could do anything. You could have put squares. You could cut out squares, cut out circles, put them out. Now you have to sit on, of course, count the number of children. Everyone knows how musical chairs is played. Sit only on the squares. So you're doing two activities. They learn to differentiate shapes and they're also having some kind of physical activity. If your class is large, do it in groups because we do, we do have large classes. Do it in groups. It doesn't have to be chairs. There are various variations to this you can find. You could just do spots in the class where they could sit, but it would be an energizing activity that you could do in your class. Fly swatters, and this is something that I have seen children really, really enjoy. I, I, this is something I found a school using and I love the concept. Your every fly swatters, we all have fly swatters. We all know what fly swatters are. So whatever activity you're doing, supposing you're doing number eight, you can do, you know, just an enlargement of your worksheet. You can have eight flies, five flies, six flies, eight horses, eight apples, nine apples, whatever. And have played in groups. Everybody has a fly swatter. Okay, now find number eight. So they go and swat it. You can do it with anything. I just said eight, eight number because that's something that came to my mind. You can do it with number names. You can do it with sight words. Find the, this picture is sight words. Can you find the sight word? And they feel, and we would play it as a team game. Have them line up. And then go swatter. Let's see which team gets more. How many correct ones has team A got? How many correct ones has team B got? And they love doing it. The very fact that they're holding a fly swatter makes them very happy. So this is, a, and you can make your own variations to this game. It could be anything. It could be whatever. I, I just thought of sight words and numbers, but I'm sure you can think of many, many more things. Movement memory. You can get children to say, all right, 
I am going to clap thrice. Some uh, A will clap thrice. So I am I clap thrice. The second child will do, add something to it. So I have clapped thrice. The second child will say, okay, I add a jump to it. So three claps and two jumps. The third child will add yet another thing. So it could be three claps, two jumps, and maybe two twists. It could just go on like that, depending on whatever kind of memory that you want. And wherever they make a mistake, we'll say, oh, we come back to the old one, or whichever way you want to work it out. So it's movement memory. You're trying to build up your memory and you're also trying to give words and names to the kind of memory that, to the kind of movement that you are doing. And this works and you don't need any props for it. And it's the best way to pull out the, the shy children, the ones who don't want to talk, the ones who don't want to do anything. Because in a kinesthetic setup, these kind of children are very comfortable. They like to do these things. The human knot. You know, this is a game that is played right up with adults also. Get children to just hold, not in a line, any way that they want. You can take five kids, tell them to hold each other's hand. So they will arbitrarily hold maybe A's left hand and C's right hand. And then it will all be curvy, turvy all over. Then give them five minutes that you have, without talking, you have to untangle yourself. And see how they can do it. Start with three children. Start with four children, let the others watch, make groups of three. It takes a little time, but they use their brain. And it's interesting because they are much faster at it, at it than we are. They're able to do it. We always feel how will they do it, but they do it much faster. As adults, we take a long time to do this. But kids, and you know, kids are small, so they'll go under it. They'll come up. It's a very interesting game. Try the human knot. Picnic with a difference. It's an indoor game. I'm not going on a picnic. But I will use it for vocabulary building. I was going on a picnic and I decided to take some sandwiches. So my friend will say, you took sandwiches, maybe I will take a glass of milk. So the story just builds on. And you can keep <clears throat> drawing whatever they say on the board. And at the end of it, you will have a picnic basket. You can even discuss somebody, if someone says, I think I'll take some chocolate, and then you can always discuss the merits of eating chocolate and not eating chocolate. Healthy food, unhealthy food. Organic, I'm not sorry, they're too small for organic and inorganic food. But you can make variations to it and use it as an activity wherever. You can link it with a language lesson, you can link it with a math lesson. And these are all brain, I'm calling them brain breaks because they're 10, 10 minute activities. They are not where you need to spend half an hour doing it as an activity, just a quick activity. This, of course, everybody knows and I'm sure everyone is doing it, the freeze dance. Just put some music, tell them to dance and freeze, statue, that different people call it different things. A quick game. This is interesting because you can put a lots of things on this tray. You can put a comb, you can put a pencil from daily life, whatever you find. It's a memory game with a difference. Show it to the children for about two, three minutes, depending on your class. Then cover it. And then put your hand inside and make a sound. Supposing it's a comb. Maybe you can take a comb and just run your hand through it. It make The things make a sound. Ask children to identify the sound. What do you think this is? What do you think I'm making a sound? I've put a tray here. You can put do it in a bag, whatever suits you. I'd get them to I listen because they don't listen. Seeing and telling you what this is common, but try this, the sound that it makes. Supposing you put a book inside. So maybe you could just open the book, you know, and just flap the pages. It makes a sound. So little sounds like that, whatever you think. Just play this as a listening game. This also works well with the classes. This is just nothing but name, place, animal thing. Now, I know your children may be too small. Supposing you get N. Now, write your name and an animal, a nightingale, and whatever, whatever. It might become a little too much for them. But ask them to draw. Everybody starts counting, starts saying the alphabet. And at whichever letter you stop, 
Okay, class. Now we're going to write, we're going to draw a name, a place, an animal and something with this letter. And let them all write and draw. If they can write, they write. If they draw, they draw. Maybe in 10 minutes you'll be able to do only two. Maybe the next day you can keep those pages. Maybe the next day you can carry on with that. Or maybe later in the day some other brain break, you can do that same thing again. They look forward to it also. They might think about it. Oh, I hope I get M. I hope I get S. I hope I get D. And then think about it. So the brain is active. They're enjoying it. They're having fun. But they're not... Do it's a break from what you were doing, whatever worksheet or whatever you were doing in the class. Four corners is a very simple game. One to four, you have four corners. Then you get one, let them go into whichever corner they want. You have one child in the middle who counts to one to ten. Everybody counts to one to ten. And then this child who's in the middle counts any one, announces any one, word, any one number from one to four. That's up to him. The ones who are in that corner are out. Get another child to do it. So it's an involvement and it's in the class. It's, so you don't need to go out anywhere to do it. Of course, it will look at the size of your class, the furniture and all that. But I'm sure some of these you will be able to do. Hot and cold. This is also something I found a class playing and I loved it. So one child goes out of the class and the class decides, okay, we'll hide his water bottle. So they hide it somewhere. And then when he enters the class, they'll say, no, no, no. Hot means you're closer to it. Cold means you're far away from it. So the class starts giving clues. Hot, 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 very hot, not so hot, cold, cold, very cold. And the child follows instructions till he reaches the, it's like a treasure hunt. But you play it in class and you call it hot and cold. The silent ball. Take a squishy ball. Let them play with it whatever, throw it at each other or whatever. But silent, they cannot make noise. Their fake coughs, their pretend laughter, tell them all that is going to be counted as talking. So they learn to keep quiet and they throw and they use facial expressions. So we call it the silent ball. Of course, who doesn't know the benefits of toy-based learning? So I think I will skip to the next one. How are we for time, Himani? I am not able to see the... Okay, we do have time. Outdoor games. Okay, quickly in the chat box, can I get some outdoor games, some names of some outdoor games, please? Let's see. Some names of outdoor games in the chat box, please, that you'll play, that you'll play in your classes. Can we get some? I think if everybody is there, I can see there are 102 people there. Let's get some answers. <clears throat> Cycling, fire on the mountain, cocoa, hockey, skipping, hopscotch, hide and seek, cocoa, nature hunt, catch, hopscotch, yes. Oh, thank you so much. Simon says crab, sliding, badminton, cocoa. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, Pushpapan, Pushpam, Poshampa, Bhai, Poshampa, yes, children. Rassi, Kood, Cornerstones, yeah, wonderful. Crocodile race, yes, all right, thank you, thank you. So, I'm really happy to see that you have all these games and they are very, very useful. You yourself would know that. Outdoor games are really, really useful. When we cannot take them out, we play indoors. And let's give them now outdoor games also refreshing. And that's why it's part of our timetable. It's part of our curriculum, no? that we have to get the children outside. All right. So how do outdoor games help us quickly? Again, as I said, release of stress. When they're playing outside, obviously, stress is released. Attention and cognitive abilities. I'm sure you know all this. I'm just revising it with you. <clears throat> Whatever they're playing, they're strategizing. If I have a football in my hand, I have to throw it. Should I throw it here? Should I throw it there? I'm thinking. I'm doing some kind of problem solving in my head. Even that is important. 
when we do free activities, when they throw wherever they want attention because they have to focus on whatever they are playing. Creativity, they learn ways and means of winning. Everybody likes to win, so they'll find ways of winning or whatever. Social skills, yes, because they talk to each other. They shout, scream, teamwork, cooperation, collaboration, all that is there. Verbal skills, pass it to me, throw it here, don't do that, this is this. And then when they're coming back, you know, little fellows, little children will talk to each other. Oh, that was so nice. Oh, you know, this one did this, this one did that. It's all verbal. It's all verbal talk. It's all verbal reasoning. It's all verbal skills being developed. And of course, sensory stimulation. When we are outside, all our senses are in focus. We feel the heat. We feel the cold. We feel the rain. We feel everything. We hear everything. So it's outdoors. Outdoors, it sort of all your five, six senses are all stimulated. Six is kinesthetic. We are walking around, so that's maximum stimulation. All right. Now, I'm not getting into what games you play because you all play and you all know. I, I just want to take you through what I feel is what we need to remember when we create activities like this. We have to have an action plan. Today's outdoor activity, chalo, aaj le ja ke main khoko khila dungi. Fine, but some action plan. If they're going to play khoko, how are they going to play? Who's going to play? Who's this? Who's that? Some action plan where we figure out structured play and unstructured play. Something that we tell them to do, something they will do on their own. You have to enable easy access. Make sure there are no barriers around so there's no injury can happen. You have to be very careful. Suitable surfacing. No one trips. You know, the surface has to be smooth. So decide your game according to the area that you have. There should be no outdoor activities carefully. By that I mean there should be no, you know, sometimes in these uh, gardens and blocks, they leave an eye lying around or they leave a saw lying around or a hammer lying around. So make sure it's safe. Make sure there's nothing like that which a child can... You know, you will only have an issue on your hands if something like this happens. When you plan your activities, please allow for uninterrupted time. Now, supposing you've planned a game that requires 20 minutes, make sure you have 25 minutes in hand when they play. Because when you stop midway, they are very upset, they're disappointed. Of course, if it starts raining, it's different. But otherwise, allow for uninterrupted time. Allow time so that everyone gets a chance. Plan activities accordingly. Some get a chance, some don't get a chance. Coincidentally, next week also the same thing may happen because you will not remember who got a chance and who didn't. By the end of the third week, they'll say, I never get a chance. Mom doesn't let me play. It'll snowball into something completely different. So please plan so that everybody gets a chance. And if, if the rain comes down or if it's something, it's not going to happen every time. But that will be once in a while. Try and do varied experiences. Don't do the same game each time. Try and do varied experiences. Be active with the children. Try and play yourself if you can. I'm not saying go dribbling a ball or whatever, but depending on what your health permits and how you know fit and, and agile you are, please be involved with the children. If it's just passing the ball, you can just stand with the children and pass the ball. They love it. Listen to children's feedback. We don't listen to them. Listen to the feedback. Listen to what they say. And when you listen to what they say, perhaps you may have to make some changes, some adjustments to what you are doing. Maybe there may be one particular game that they just don't like. You tried it twice, so drop it. It doesn't matter. You may like it. Children haven't liked it. It doesn't matter. Maybe you'll try it with some other batch. So learn and adjust to their needs. That's important. Let's come to field trips. I'm sure you all go. I think on an average, every, every session you have to do two field trips if I'm not wrong. Minimum of two. If you can do more, nothing like it. Some schools, they do one a month, which is wonderful if you can do that. Now field trips also have their own advantages. I have written a few that I remembered. There must be many more. 
growing your own garden, zoo, grocery store, library, museum, fire station, a farm if you can take them to, orchard, a bakery, show them a potter, a carpenter, aquarium. There must be many, many, many that you must be doing, which I have left out there. They are an integral part of learning, of fun with learning, of play as pedagogy. This is all play as pedagogy because in every activity they are learning something. Now, how exactly do I define a field trip? It's a real world experience of locations. I'm showing them a farm in the book. I'm showing them a farm in my videos. I'm showing them a farm in whatever, whatever uh, teaching aid I'm using in my class. But actually going there and actually looking at those little chicks or the donkey or the dog or the cow is a totally different experience for all of us. So this makes learning better. And of course gives them a better understanding. And that's the reason why field trips are done. So very often there'll be children, there'll be parents who'll come and say, oh, the class is going out for a picnic. If, if for them, everything is a picnic. I'm not sending my child today. Please encourage parents to send children for field trips, but you have to plan your field trips properly. So there's, this three, there's a pre-trip, there's a trip and a post-trip. In a pre-trip, you are the one who's responsible because you have to do your planning. Where the place is... Every school has their own way of figuring out things. You know, you must know exactly where you're going, what you're going to see. How safe is it? How far is it? What kind of clothes should the children take? What kind of food would you advise them to take? And tell children about it. If it's going to a park, tell them about the park. If it's going to the zoo, tell them about the zoo. So that's your pre-trip when you prepare children for it. When you go on a trip, please tell them what to watch out for. That's important. They must have some idea about what is it that they have to watch out for, what is it that they have to do. And when you come back, of course, there should be a follow-up. Whichever way you want to do it as a worksheet, you want to do it as a discussion, you want to do it as some drawing, whichever way. But there has to be. A, otherwise, a field trip would not be of any use as pedagogy. It would be just fun time. So why not make it fun and learning? Which is what we're talking about today. <clears throat> now, for a successful trip, what I have just said, plan everything, use pre-visit activities to prepare, have clear learning objectives. If I'm taking the children to a, to a zoo, what am I looking at? What am I looking at their learning? Have, it, have clear objectives. Tell the children, are you going to see domestic animals? You're going to see wild animals. You're going to see animals with fur. You're going to see animals without fur. Are you going to see birds and animals? What's the difference between birds and animals, etc., etc.? You can figure it out. Please remember that chaperoning is not a spectator sport. I, because most of the time we think, oh, I'm just going along. I just watch out. No one gets hurt. I have to follow them. I just see that they are safe. My only job is to see that they are safe. No, your only job is not to see that they are safe. That is your one job. The other job is to see that the children are learning and they're enjoying and they're having fun. Give everyone name tags. Have your own identification marks. Keep them engaged. That's why you have to be involved. Okay, if you're looking at a lion in a zoo, let's see, is that the mane? Are those the stripes? What a lion is this? What do you think a lion eats? Is it a carnivore or a herbivore? Etc, etc. And give children time to observe. If you've told them you're going to see a lion and I want to know four things about a lion when you come back. Give them time to see those four things. Remind them there. Remember I told you I'm going to ask you for four things? So look at four things of a lion. Another group would be told look at four things for a monkey. Whatever. And that, it is only then that you make students accountable for their learning. When you come back and you ask them, okay, what, did the, what were the four things of the lion that you saw in the lion? It could be the lion's food. It could be the lion's cage. It could be anything. So only then will they become accountable for their learning. And with little children, best is to do it when you're coming back in the bus or wherever, however you go. Because that's when they remember best. Next day, they may or may not remember. Bring back experiences, evaluate and share. It's so, so important. Now, how do field trips help us? Of course, I've been talking about brain breaks. I've been talking about all kinds of things. Empathy, tolerance, collaboration, connection, critical thinking. I'm not elaborating on this. I think they are self-explanatory. 
what I need to uh, want to highlight here is the reinforce the knowledge that they've gained. Now, they've been to a zoo, you've done an activity with them, build up on it. Give them some work. Okay, let's get me some more information on the kinds of lions that are there or the kinds of monkeys that are there or whatever. Push them to ask questions and build connections with them. Because yeah. they learn to manage themselves and they learn to be with others. Spending time in nature. It's so important to spend time in nature, which we, I don't know, how cold is it? that you can spend time in nature or as everyone, I think, bundled inside the houses. But it's important to spend time in nature. Let children go out and feel the cold. Why do we keep them away from the cold? We are constantly worried that they will catch a cold and they think, so part of growing up, they're well clad, please let them out. I mean, you, your kids may be grown up in the audience, but you could tell parents that allow children to feel the cold also. It's a healthy part of growing up. But spending time is nature. You know, research tells us that stress levels for all of us, including children, falls when we spend time in nature. When we look at the expanse of green, our stress levels fall. And you become calmer, you become nicer, your emotions are, you are more in control of your emotions, more time that you spend in green. This is a research proven fact. And of course, there's always the vitamin D concept also, spending time in the sun, which the outdoor play would give us. Because nowadays it's, uh, it, it's really alarming the rate at which even children are having vitamin D deficiency. And vitamin D deficiency in the long run leads to spatial relationships issue because the brain doesn't function as well as it should be. Now in this, I have highlighted a few activities which I thought I'm sure all of you do. Grow or pick. If you have a patch, if you don't have a patch, tell children to do it at home. It's a little growing space of their own. They could plant something. You could have a little vegetable patch in your class, in your uh, if, if the school has some space. Let them do something. Let them do a little digging. Let them put a little seed. You can always have a garden and look at it after the kids have left. But let them do it. They deal with mud, deal with nature. It works. It works for them. If this is not possible, please encourage children to put pots at home. I have met a lot of parents who have told me I hated plants. I didn't like plants in my house, but my child has insisted that I bring plants home. And now I have so many pots, which we both look after. So even if it is bringing two pots home or bringing one pot home, it will grow to four. Encourage it. So let them bring nature inside. Tell them to, you know, keep a plant which is which doesn't require too much care, your normal money plant, your normal creepers, they don't require too much tending, they don't require too much water. So please encourage them. And once you know, once they have this, you can tell children, take a photo of your plant, share it with me. Take a photo of your plant, blow it up, make it your background. There are various ways in which they can be involved. You have a plant, sit next to it and read, sit next to it and do your homework, sit next to it and listen to music. So you tell them to bring a plant in the and create a space for themselves. Only then will they learn to appreciate the green. Otherwise, they will not appreciate the green. Of course, encourage them to do as many activities outside as possible. Take a walk. If that is not possible, encourage them to draw, paint, which you'll always do, a garden scene. Have you ever wondered why we always do paint a garden? Research tells us that green is important. Draw animals, paint nature, paint flowers. Put flowers, you know, when they, can, when they do that step of copying. So you can put some a picture of some flowers and tell them to copy, or a picture of a garden and tell them to copy. Stargazing. Now, stargazing will not be possible during the day. Use a video for it. Show them stars. Let them look up and see stars. The rest of it at night, stargazing, you can ask parents to do it with them at home. But in school, if there, you can use a video for it. 
but encourage them to do be outside to enjoy the green around them. That's why there's so such a drive about planting, you know, trees and stuff, because we've we've gradually lost out on all that. Please encourage children to help the environment. Pick up litter, not pluck plants. Water them if possible. Etc. Etc. Empathy comes in. Caring for the environment comes in. Appreciation for nature comes in. Sensory development comes in. It's so important. They learn so much. Care for animals and take notice of nature. When we talk about nature, you know, we're talking about what you can see, hear, taste, smell, touch. Encourage them to see. Tell them to see. If you go to the park, even if it's the regular park in school that you take them to, tell them what to see. Today I want you to see the gate and tell me something about the gate. Today I want you to see the patch of red flowers. Tell me something about So encourage them to take notice. That's how their observation skills will develop. When they come back, maybe a little mindfulness exercise, maybe a little exercise for being grateful for having the park to go to. Care for animals. Many of you may not be animal lovers. Yes, I appreciate that. But we need to, to make our children understand that this world is all about coexistence. It's as much the animal planet as it is the human planet. So one cannot wipe out the other. And you hear so much these days about there's one a lot of people who do so much for animals and there's one lot of people who don't do anything for animals. So caring for animals. I'm not really saying that encourage everyone to get a pet home because not everybody likes to keep a pet. But at least to care for them, to not throw stones at them. You don't have to go out of your way to feed them. But at least care for them, be nice to them. Stay away from them. Nobody wants to be bitten, nobody wants to be scratched. But not to hurt them. So teach them that. I wanted to share this with you because this is something one of the students once said and I found it so beautiful. Being outside, feeding rabbits, talking to donkeys and looking after sick lambs. It's incredibly grounding no matter what my state of mind. Getting muddy in all weathers, breathing fresh air, proudly talking to visitors about the animals and being part of the seasonal cycle of a farm, it has been life-changing. When The reason I'm sharing this with you is when they work with their hands, when they see things around them, we are talking of this as brain breaks, but if you look at these brain breaks, especially when we're looking at <clears throat> being in nature, it's really, really life-changing because there's so much that you... You look at it yourself. You go for a walk on a happy mood. You come back, you're in a happy mood. Unless, of course, you had a fight and you've gone and you've only been cribbing about it in your head. That, then it won't work. But if you go for a nice walk... And <clears throat> nowadays, research also tells us that don't listen to music when you walk because you're blocking out all natural sounds. So listen to the music, listen to the music of nature, even if it's horns blaring and people shouting, just listen. We are just stopping ourselves from listening. Or maybe you can listen to music for some time and then take it off. That's for the adults. Okay. So these were the four things, indoor games, outdoor games, field trips and being in nature that I wanted to talk about today. This is part of play as pedagogy. This is all play where learning is happening and fun. And they also serve as brain breaks because they give the brain time to reset and go back to whatever academic work you were doing earlier. <clears throat> any questions? If you have any questions, please feel free to ask and try and answer them. I think we, we have about five minutes. We, we do have 10 minutes, yes. So if anybody has any questions, please ask. You can put them on the chat box. Wait, let me just stop share. Anybody has any questions, please ask. Teachers? Any no questions? Anybody has regarding the session? Indulging kids is really tedious. How to manage? 
No, if you keep them engaged, plan, plan what you're going to do. That's why I said con 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 constantly I'm saying plan for structured and unstructured thing. You have 40 minutes with them, plan for 50 minutes. You will be able to keep them engaged. Maybe not for 40 minutes, but at least 30 minutes. And use when they are, um, you don't have to indulge them. If you have 40 minutes with them, do 15 minutes of work, do 5 minutes of a brain break. Do another 15 minutes of work, do another 5 minutes of brain break. 10 minutes, 5 minutes, that's for you to decide. But do these little break. What I did in the beginning with you, know, those oh. indoor games, try any of those. They really work. They won't Hi, get thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, Sona ma'am has a question. Sona ma'am, you can unmute. Yeah, the same query I have. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Good evening. As uh, I am a chemistry teacher and my children, if I'm doing such kind of activities in my class, they all yes. involve in their self-talk. What happened to us? What happened to us? How did we do it? So, that thing is a little bit like you said, 10-5 minutes. So, 10-5 minutes, you can only keep them in the same way. No, you... आप ऐसे मत बोलो ना कि चुप हो जाओ आप उनको एक्टिविटी दे दो तो उस एक्टिविटीज में क्या होता है जो करने वाले जैसे कि मैंने अभी अपनी क्लास 11th में यूजुअली मैंने अपनी एक्टिविटी कंडक्ट करवाई उसमें मतलब कह लेते हैं उनका क्ले के फॉर्म में क्ले के फॉर्म में दे हैव टू मेक अ स्ट्रक्चर तो उसमें क्या हुआ कि कुछ बच्चों ने बना लिया जिसने बना लिया उसमें वो फिर प्लेइंग मोड में आ गए कि वी हैव अ क्ले एज वी आर इन क्लास 11th एंड वी डोंट गेट द क्ले टू टेल मी हाउ डज इट मैटर इफ द चाइल्ड इज प्लेइंग लेट हिम प्ले uh, it matters see, when in a class, see, come and tell that they are not doing the activity. No, no. I'm saying, see, first of all, you're talking about class 11, where children are about 16, 17 years old, right? right. Now, their attention span is very different from the little ones. Now, if this, this you have a class of, say, 40, you will always have some children who will finish their work in 10 minutes and some who will not finish their work. Right? So the ones who have finished their work and you've given them clay, you tell them, okay, you've got this plaster of Paris or whatever you use to make your skeleton, make something more. Give them, give them five, ten minutes to play. At the heart of it, they have solar satra kya, but wo hai to bachche na. Tell them I'm giving it to you for ten minutes, do ten minutes more and then just come and give it back to me. And be firm, they'll give it back to you. Because the more you tell them, now stop playing, stop playing, the more they will play. So give it to them. So that will become an additional motive for the others also. Because 11th standard ke ko ke liye. Clay or whatever. Usko so he's getting it in school. Let him enjoy it. I would say give him 10 minutes. Let him play. In a... How do you manage special kids, ma'am? I think we'll do a session separately on special kids because it's not possible to answer this question right here. Lose their belonging while doing work like pencil, eraser, etc. That yes, is bound can... to happen, don't we? Uh, Nidhi, ma'am, you have a question? Yes, ma'am. I have the same question, how to handle the special kids in the class and the, especially the children who are very uh, short uh, Span of concentration, attention span. Yeah, basically, I have three, four kids who are very short, uh, very, very short uh, attention span. Uh, so they, whenever we we are starting with an activity, so they distract a lot. If uh, even if I give them some rewards and something, some different uh, thing also play also, even then they just interrupt in between, and you know, how uh, ten minutes I spend in making them quiet and making them sit. So how to? <laughs> okay, now you know that you've asked me several questions. Uh, I think, Kamani, we will do a session on special handling special children. One is that. Yeah. Second thing, I would also yeah like within this say, class scenario because you know separately you can handle the child, but at the time no, no, I'm saying you have to in a group do, in a team. Okay, I understand that we we can do a session separately on handling special children. But here, what I would like to say to you is that it will also depend on the kind of special need the child has got. Maybe all four in your class are at different levels of their special needs. So that needs to be looked into. Now, if they're at this end, how, at where are they on the spectrum? 
because sometimes even if they can, you know, children special or not, they learn that they can get away with a lot of things. So we need right. to figure that out. So maybe we could discuss this separately. Of feel free, you can reach out to me at any point, and we can discuss this separately. Okay. Okay. We can do that because you need to know sure. what level they are, and then we need to also figure out, depending on the level that they are at, what activity would work. Maybe for one child, more motor activities are required. For one, more verbal activities are required, and then accordingly, you will have to plan the activity for them. So maybe the activities that you are doing are not really um, stimulating them, or they 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 finish it very fast and then they're again up. So we can look yeah, at yeah. For example, I ju I just took an activity of uh, making them read in the class. So what I did, I uh, wrote down uh, different different words on different different slips. And then I make them uh, randomly gave them, and I told them now we we have to make the sentence. Suppose maybe this is a cat, right? So every child has got different word, and then they have to stand in the in a sentence form. So that was the activity, and uh, and they so, didn't they were not able to do it. No, they were able to do it. Oh, Some so of them, are, yeah. So that they, means you, for them, you need to give them four sentences and not one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Try that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Maybe you need to give them more than the yes. average class. Yeah, generally we give more only, but there yeah. are children who don't, you know, stand and you know who who distract yeah, in see, between. So in that's class, that you have already yeah, told a, me that we will be taking you class, know, a separate session. You will yeah. have all kinds of children. That's why they say you know that as a true. kindergarten teacher, especially you have to have ten hands. Correct. Huh? Like Durga, no? <laughs> right. But then we can, you know, so we could do, we, we will do a special session. We'll do a separate session on this. Sure, ma'am. And do we have our your number with us? Himani or is what you can take it from. All right, ma'am. in touch with Himani, she'll give it to Yes, you. yes, yes. Okay, okay. ma'am. Thank you. Well, Thank you so much. You, you can find me in the group also. Okay, yeah. ma'am. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Ma'am, can we just do the cloud? I'd like to take one takeaway from all of you if you have time. So, Ma'am, there are a couple of more questions I have okay. in the chat box. How to deal with student who is not ready to sit for a single moment and keeps on disturbing, distracting others. You know what? This is a very, very perennial common question. And we, if we see them in every single class at every stage of school. What we need to find out with the little ones is what is it that's bothering them? You know, sometimes it's very strange. They come in uncomfortable clothes and they feel itchy all the time. So you could start from there. What is it that's troubling them? They haven't slept well. Start with the physical first. They haven't slept well. The systems are not okay. Their clothes are not comfortable. And something is bothering them that they can't sit still. You know, sometimes children also come with the mother will say, today you must do all the work that the teacher tells you to do. Okay, you're a good boy. You come back, I want to see a good boy. I want. So the child comes to school with the pressure of being a good boy. So all the time he's peering at other people's things to see, okay, now this, am I good? Am I not good? This is just to give you an example. So first, I think we need to find out why they're irritable why they are getting, you know, they're doing what they are doing. And there are some pointers for that. We will look at that. We, I think we've got a lot of issues here. We will take up these. But you need to find out why they're irritable and why they're restless. Not everybody has an attention span issue. Teachers, there are, I see and, a lot of questions here. And uh, I think with the lack of time, I may not be able to take all of them. However, can I do one thing if everybody agrees, I'll, I'll, a thumbs up will do. If I take down all these questions and I answer them on your on the group, can I do that? I'll answer all of them, I promise. I'll just take some time with Ruma ma'am and I'll keep answering all those kids. Can I get some thumbs up so I know I can go ahead with it? Ma'am, we can do a continuation of uh, just a question answer session one day. We can do a continuation and I'll note down all these questions. You can we'll send in about 10, 15 questions to us. Ma'am, there are 10-15 questions I have. I have about what, seven odd with me. So we could do, 
we could do a session with just answering your questions instead of uh, you know having a topic so we'll do a q a kind of a session. yeah we'll do a q a okay. and if we know in advance what are the kind of questions it's easier for us we'll definitely do i think that will that will solve a lot of issues and we'll do a session separately on special children all right so teachers, I'm also sending you my number on the group chat. Uh, there are some teachers who are asking me to add them. If you could just send me a number, your uh, message on the WhatsApp, I'll send you a joining link to the group, right? It's just easier that way. All right. So now to conclude the session, we have with us one quick activity. So this is an interesting technology activity. So you go, uh, go on Google or on any browser and just write menti.com. When you write it, it will ask you for a code. And you type in the code 7373193. It's easy. 7373193. And then you'll see this question and you'll be able to answer. In a matter of minutes, you'll see a beautiful cloud being created with all your responses. So let's see. What is your takeaway? You see, I also want feedback no? as to what I should do and should not do. It's always important for me to take feedback. So if you can please do this for me, just go on any browser. Yes. Go on any browser and type menti, M-E-N-T-I dot com, menti dot com. Once you type enter, it will ask you for a code. In the code, write 7373193. It's written on the screen also. If you see my screen, on the top of the screen, it's mentioned here. Yeah. Okay. I can also do, I think, one thing. I'm putting the link on the chat. I've just put the link on the chat box. Click on this link. Let's make it easier. Click on the link I've put in the chat box. Click on the link in the chat box. It will automatically open. See, it has begun. And the fun begins. Activities, fun, play. Yeah, please please use those activities in your class as brain breaks, please. Oh, somebody's written their name, Meena. Oh, you nice. see this? <laughs> <laughs> brain breaks. You see this beautiful cloud wow. developing? This is always so much fun. I'm happy to see planting, nature walk, field trip, green world. Yes, thank you. Reinforce, absolutely. Quizzes, nature work, interesting. We have a very, very good audience, ma'am. They're active. I'll just stop yes. share for a minute. Somebody is asking for a link. I'll just share the link. I have to stop share for that for a minute. And I'm sharing it back. Oh, wow. This is beautiful. Wow. This is really nice. Super active group. Absolutely. We could take a picture of this, Imani. I will. I will share it in the group also. Yeah, take a picture of it and share it in the group. And send it to me. I'm not in the group. Send it to me. I will. I will. Very nice. I'm so happy and I'm happy to see that so many takeaways have been taken. Yes. I mean, if everybody is writing, even if there are similar points, it just gives us a re lot of reassurance that yes. we've done something nice today. Something I'm productive. Gonna good, I'm going to have a good day today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just FYI, ma'am's connected with us from the States today. And it is, I think I'm 6 a.m. there. 6 a.m. <laughs> so 6 a.m. She's up and awake to take a session with all of us. So hats off. No, I enjoy it. Yes, yes, option, ma'am. Yes, option, no. You can use this. So uh, if you're in the group, just send me a WhatsApp. I'll send you the link to this. Or if you can just take a screenshot also, just go on mentimeter.com. And you know, we are also using the free version. We don't pay for that version. 
to be able yeah. to use the free version <laughs> for a for love, you could absolutely use this. And for literacy classes, yes, it's it's fun. It really no, works. Children, children love doing this. Yes, please use this in your class. It's really, really it's nice. Idea. It works. And it's the free version. You don't have to pay for it. Yeah. They're not allowed you to do more than two or three, but that's fine. Just take a screenshot, save okay. it. I think more. even if you do one a, one in a, in 15 days or once a month, it's more than enough for the little ones. You don't need more than that. Because they need constant stimulation. And it's fun. It's colorful. It's interesting. All right. Now I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Yeah, please. Thank you. And I'm thank going you to so thank much. you everybody for joining in. I've shared the feedback link in the chat box. I'll share it in the group as well. Thank you, Ruma, for joining it at 6 a.m. with us. Rather 5.30 she was here. I'll so, Always a pleasure. Thank you, teachers. I've had a lovely session with you and I look forward to more sessions with you. Thank so you so much. We plan another session which will be QN. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank Enjoy you. your holidays and hope to see you very soon. Yeah. Have a good Thank holiday. You. Have a good holiday, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much, ma'am.